chairman of SEC, who is the, now the chairman of uh, SEPLAT, Mr. Udoma Udo Udoma. And specially recognizes the Honorable Minister, who is here to witness this occasion. We appreciate seeing you at NGX, Honorable Minister. To this significant occasion, commemorating the illustrious 10th anniversary of surplus listing on the exchange. Today we gather to celebrate a decade defined by remarkable growth and unwavering dedication within Nigeria's energy sector. Surplus journey symbolizes resilience, innovation, and a commitment to excellence, making them a beacon of corporate governance and operational expertise. Since the inception in 2000 and the dual listing of the Nigeria Exchange Limited and London Stock Exchange in 2014, Seplat has emerged as a leading indigenous energy company, deeply integrated into Nigeria's economic landscape. The trajectory of its stock price soaring from 576 Naira at listing to over 3,370 as of today reflects an astonishing surge of over 500% underscoring the significant role of capital market in facilitating transparent and effective business dealings. At NDS Group, our commitment to deepening the capital market and cultivating an environment conducive to sustainable growth and innovation remains unwavering. Over the years, we have implemented numerous initiatives aimed at bolstering market liquidity, investor confidence, market integrity, and attracting listings. Through the introduction of innovative products, strategic partnership, digital transformation, and services such as the ETFs, the REITs, green bonds, derivatives, NGS continues to attract a diverse array of issuers and investors, facilitating capital formation and investment opportunities across various sectors of the economy. Furthermore, we are actively advancing environmental responsibility and sustainability within the Nigerian capital market collaborating with stakeholders to embed the ESG imperative into the ecosystem. I believe Edith will like that statement. Despite the headwinds that have shaped the domestic and global investment climate, the Nigerian capital market has demonstrated remarkable resilience, characterized by impressive performance indicators that underscores our strength, agility, and sustainability. In 2023, the Nigerian capital market achieved unprecedented milestones with the all share index surging to a record of over 74,000 points, making a historic moment in the exchange history. Year to date, the market has sold by over 36 percent, distinguishing ourselves as the world's best performing exchange in the first quarter of 2024. <laughs> As of yesterday, April 15, 2024, the angel all share index and market capitalization stood at over 101, 777.12 and over 57 trillion Naira, respectively. NGS Group actively advocates for listed companies through tax reforms, foreign exchange prioritization, and stakeholder engagements. We invest in enhancing investor understanding through our ex-academy and inviting and driving growth in African capital markets, as evidenced by our investment recently in the Ethiopian Securities Exchange. As we celebrate surplus milestone, let me also celebrate the resilience of the Nigerian capital market. The NGS group remains committed to supporting companies like Seplat as they drive economic growth and contribute to our nation's prosperity, as even stated during the cocktail by Honorable Minister. In conclusion, let me once again welcome a world-class forward-looking Nigerian company that we are always proud of at NGS, Seplat Energy PLC, on this remarkable milestone. I look forward to witnessing even greater achievements in the next decade, as stated by the chairman of Seplat at the cocktail, too. Once more, congratulations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct pleasure. Before inviting the chairman of Seplat, Mr. Odoma Odoma, to invite the group CEO, Temi Popola to make his own remarks, then the acting CEO uh, to come and make, a Jude chairmaker to come and make his presentation briefly before we invite, because today is for Seplat, so that at least we can listen, not only to the chairman of Seplat, but including the CEO. Once more, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it.
Thank you very much, Chairman. Please let me stand on the protocols that have been established. Um, as you probably can tell, it's usually difficult for me to speak after my chairman because <laughs> whilst he can speak without a microphone, I probably with a microphone still need to project myself. Um, but it really is a pleasure to have everybody here today. And I guess with my remarks, uh, a few things. One, for me personally, Seplat is a very, very personal story to me. And uh, maybe I should start from there when I talk about it being personal. Uh, first and foremost, of course, I have friends in Seplat, uh, both whether it's management or the stakeholders of Seplat. Uh, I would refrain from calling names because then I'll get in trouble. But at least I would talk about Roger, for example, who I can say is a friend, you know, just in the course of all of the things that we are doing. So to celebrate that today is, you know, gives me a lot of fulfillment. Um, but perhaps slightly more importantly, still on the personal level, <clears throat> is that this transaction 10 years ago, I was very personally involved in. I had just returned to Nigeria at the time. I was with CSL stockbrokers at the time. And then this transaction came through. We were brokers, but then there were the lead issuing houses, and we were responsible to sell this offering. This was probably the largest thing that you had seen at the exchange, a dual listing in Lagos, uh, and in London. And by the way, let me also appreciate, I would say, the work that had happened in the exchange even before my time. Uh, because this was a landmark moment for the capital market. So many thanks to you know, people that had been here before me. But back to that transaction. Uh, it was a very exciting transaction to sell. It really opened the floodgates on quite a few things to Nigeria. But let me stick on the personal level first, because on that deal, I made quite some money, because the way the fee structure was done at the firm I was in was that the more deals you can bring to the table, the more money you can make. And if you remember, Roger, quite a lot of foreign investors, I remember very well James Johnston of RWC, uh, John Nabold of SQM, Ashmore, many of these accounts who brought real money to this transaction. So I really do... Uh, appreciate that. Still on the personal level, I then remember when I went to the firm I was before the exchange, Renaissance Capital, where I was CEO for the business there. I do remember also trying to originate transactions there on the advisory side with Roger. It was a very tough negotiator, uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think that relationship has helped. And then, of course, at the exchange, more recently, uh, I have found Sepla to be a very, very strong, loyal ally to have. Um, Seplat has supported us uh, at the exchange, sponsoring events that we do, just really standing there behind us as a corporate. So let's leave the personal side, you know, away, and let me speak also to what I think Seplat has done for our industry. Um, honestly, uh, when you look at the markets today, it's hard to divorce whatever you like about the Nigerian capital markets from the Seplat story. First and foremost, that deal of 10 years ago, we haven't seen anything like that in this market in that time, which is good and not so good. But it tells a story in and of itself. So if you were to look back to our markets and try to find landmarks, right, the last real major landmark you will find in this market is this transaction of 10 years ago that we really are celebrating today. So the market is very, very grateful for that. We are hoping that we can actually get back to where we were 10 years ago, where you saw dual listings, where you actually saw IPOs. People come to the market to raise capital in those sorts of offerings, where you had foreign investors participating in the market. Secondly, I think Seplat also has brought a level of governance to our industry. Uh, I, again, I'm so amazed when I just look at the level of operation at Seplat. It's a very well-run company. You can tell that they're committed to the highest levels of governance. I think they've won one or two awards in our sort of annual, um, you know, awards that is given out by our regulation company, as an example. Um, you see a company that is well run, a lot to aspire to. And if you look at the sort of organization of today, it just tells you that there's quite a lot of depth there. And the other thing I will celebrate about the company, back to our capital markets, is also this ability to merge both local and foreign capital together. There are very few companies that are successfully able to do that. When we had the FX crisis in Nigeria, one of the things that helped investors remain is this dual ability to be able to you know, buy and sell and at least exit in and out of Nigeria. So that also I think that the markets are extremely uh, grateful for. Uh, going forward, what are we hoping that we can then catalyze on around this relationship? Of course, we're hoping that we can build on many of these things. As my chairman just said, we are also just starting a journey at the exchange. 
uh, a very strong foundation has been laid, like I said, but we have extremely ambitious, uh, sort of uh, extreme, extreme ambitions as a business. Uh, we're looking really to support the government of the day. We're looking to support the economy. We think that this exchange and the markets can be a very strong catalyst for many of the things that we say are not quite right or can be improved in our country. So, for example, we stand now at the cusp of a huge capital raising effort by the banks. We are positioned to do things that, in our minds, hopefully will be very transformational. The ability to drive financial inclusion, the ability to get retail investors into the country, the ability to show that we can actually use technology and digitize our capital markets. Now, for a firm like Seplat, we also are looking forward to a future where we can be closer to you, your capital needs, your stakeholder sort of engagement, responsibilities, and things of that nature. We have ambitions also around sustainability. It's one that I know that CEPLA does care about uh, quite a bit. In fact, when you look at the, I think it's a sustainability book that you release, it's, it just leaves so much to be desired. Uh, so things like that, we're hoping that we'll come back to partner with CEPLA around uh, many of these ambitions that we have. But uh, because we're a little bit pressed on time, let me just welcome everyone again. We really are delighted to have you, Honorable Minister. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you very much, Chairman CEPLA also, and everyone who's here today. And we look forward to having a very, very good time together. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, next we're going to welcome Mr. Drew Chiemeka, the acting CEO, NGX. Can we welcome him with a round of applause? Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, minister. I have my own uh, list of my reading. But because this is really not about NGX, uh, I'll put that aside. Uh, <laughs> it's really about CEPLA today. Uh, and just to thank everyone for making our time to be with us. Ten years is a long time, especially in a country such as Nigeria. A lot can happen in ten years. Uh, but we're truly delighted that what has happened to CEPLA in ten years is not just phenomenal, but actually a testament to how wealth can be created using the capital market. Uh, the company was listed at 576. As of yesterday, uh, it closed at 3,370 3, naira, uh, which is, for those that are good in math, it's over 400%, 480% return. But that does not include the dividends that they have paid over the years. Uh, to put a figure to that, in the last 10 years, they've paid out uh, $575 million as dividends, both in Nigeria as well as uh, in London Stock Exchange, where they are also listed. So this company has given investors a huge opportunity to really participate in wealth creation. Uh, and, but beyond just all the monetary part of it, there's also the environmental care uh, that they, that they are concerned about that the GCU uh, spoke about, which is really around ESG related matters. Uh, and I must commend them also for what they do in terms of sports. Your annual golf tournaments are always a delight. The last one that happened at the Kui Club was very, very well attended. And I think those are the things that corporates bring, the freshness, the, the activity, the life that they bring to our very community. But on the final note, I just want to thank uh, the management and team for the, what they do. Uh, there's always that coordination, especially the gender distribution of the company. If you look closely, you will see that you have a lot of female representation in their management. And I think you can actually have a feel and a sense of that because they say in the next 20 years, women, it's not just going to be talk, but women are actually going to be the ones in charge of the wealth of the nations. And I think, I think Sam Platt has already started on that trajectory. So for, for, for our investors, right, we are a platform providers. Uh, and we have international investors, we have domestic investors, we have this pool of capital, we have the technology to attract listings, we have all kinds of MOUs arrangement with international exchanges, London Stock Exchange, recently Dubai, and all these exchanges. So we'll encourage CEPLAT to take advantage of our platform to raise more capital. Uh, there's still a pool of capital available should you decide to tap the market, which we think will be soon, both on the fixed income side uh, as well as on the equity side. The exchange is really, as you can feel, there's, there's a newness to the exchange. 
and we're really hoping that you'll take advantage of this newness and raise more capital to grow your business because we think that as your business grows clearly the wealth of the nation will also grow uh, and it's tied and i'm happy that the minister is here because this is really tied to the one trillion dollar economy that the president talks about it's really possible if you have seen the latest report uh, nigeria will be top 10 20 companies uh, tw top 10 20 countries in the next 25 years and i think seplat is really poised uh, to be one of those leading institutions that will drive growth prosperity and inclusiveness in our nation thank you so much for coming Thank you so much for the wonderful remarks. All right, we're now going to move over to the SEPLAT side of things. First, it gives us special honor to welcome our board chairman, SEPLAT Energy PLC, Mr. Udoma Udo Udoma. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the Honorable Minister of State, for Petroleum Resources Oil, Senator Dr. Heineken Lopobri, the Group Chairman of the Exchange, Alaji Dr. Umaru Kwairanga, the Group CEO of the Exchange, Mr. Temi Kwapola, the Acting CEO of the Exchange, Mr. Jude Chiameka, the Doyen of the Day, uh, I think Chief Ndata, I believe. Yes. Very welcome. Uh, the CEO of SEPLAT, Mr. Roger Brown, and my colleagues on the board, uh, many of whom are here. I, I wish to particularly recognize them. Uh, the stockbrokers, advisors, bankers, and of course, the media. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to this auspicious event, the closing gong ceremony to mark a decade of dual listing of Seplat Energy PLC on the Nigerian Exchange, as well as the London Stock Exchange. As you know, and it has been highlighted we are the first nigerian company to be listed on both the premium board of the nigerian exchange as well as the main market of the london stock exchange um, on the 14th of april 2014 the day of our dual listing Seplat Energy raised over 500 US million dollars in a landmark initial public offer listing. Our desire was to build a company that would stand the test of time and stand shoulder to shoulder with other global players from other clients, whilst bolstering our brand visibility, our credibility, and our reputation. We are pleased to say that during these 10 years, Seplat has witnessed incredible growth, delivering value to our shareholders and supporting the federal government's goals of achieving self-sufficiency. And I thank all the members of the exchange who have acknowledged this. Thank you very much. Notwithstanding our dual listing, Honorable Minister, I want to emphasize that we are a Nigerian company. We are a Nigerian company committed to contributing to the economic prosperity of Nigeria. We intend to continue to play a prominent role in driving Nigeria's transition to sustainable and affordable energy harnessing its power to improve lives by transforming the economy. Recent projects that we have undertaken, such as the Anno Gas Project, which achieved mechanical completion on 29 December last year, 2023, 
are examples of our continuing investment in gas. Seplat Energy's first gas guidance from this plant by the third quarter of 2024 remains. We are also committed to growing oil production in Nigeria for domestic use and export to meet our market targets at the OPEC level. And this explains our recent acquisition of ExxonMobil's share capital in mobile producing Nigeria Unlimited. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our CEO Roger Brown will now share more details on the achievements and milestones Surplus Energy has recorded in the decade since the initial listing in 2014. What it remains is for me to once more thank the exchange for this unique opportunity and also thank all of you for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to our board chairman, Mr. Udoma Udo Udoma. We're now going to have a presentation from our CEO, Mr. Roger Brown. We have a video to play, and we are going to play that very quickly, and then we'll have our CEO come up and make his presentation. On the 14th of April 2014, Seplat Energy raised over $500 million in a landmark initial public offer, IPO listing on both the London Stock Exchange LSE and Nigeria Exchange NGX. This was the first dual listing of a Nigerian oil company and the largest IPO out of sub-Saharan Africa at that time. The main motive behind Seplat Energy's vision of listing in two jurisdictions was the great desire to build a company that would stand the test of time and stand shoulder to shoulder with other global players. The dual IPO came with a trail of benefits, both for Nigeria as a country and Seplat Energy as a company. For instance, it helped to deepen the Nigerian capital market, adding 28 billion Naira, $173,900,000 to the Nigerian exchange, NGX. Secondly, Seplat Energy and its advisors pioneered a new cross-border settlement mechanism now known as the Seplat Energy Model to enable the free transfer of equity shares between the United Kingdom and Nigerian share registers. The IPO also enabled Seplat Energy to access a deep pool of capital and gain the benefits of an enhanced profile and liquidity, including the ability to generate more revenue compete for new acquisitions, invest in opportunities, diversify, reduce costs, and recruit new talents. Some of these benefits are as follows. May 2015, we successfully completed and commissioned the 150 million standard cubic feet per day, Oban Phase 1, processing capacity expansion. March 2017, the 225 million standard cubic feet per day, Oban Phase 2 processing capacity expansion was completed and commissioned. October 2018. We concluded the early renewal of our core producing licenses for OMLs 4, 38 and 41 to the year 2038. March 2018. We successfully refinanced existing debts with $350 million bond 9.25% plus $300 million RCF. December 2019, we successfully completed the acquisition of Eland Oil and Gas, the first acquisition of a UK-listed company by a Nigerian company. February 2021, AGPC successfully raised $260 million debt to complete the ANO project. March 2021, successfully refinanced existing debts with $650 million bond and maintained dividend at 7.75%. July 2021, our new strategy launched the three pillars of upstream, midstream and new energy pillars. February 2022, Seplat Energy signed an SPA for the entire share capital of mobile producing Nigeria Unlimited. 
September 2022. Again, we successfully refinanced existing RCF with a new three-year $350 million RCF due in June 2025. February 2023. Seplot Energy raised core dividend to 12 cents as cumulative dividends exceed IPO proceeds. January 2024. We achieved the mechanical completion of the Ano gas plant. April 2024. Mr. Udoma Udo Udoma was voted as the company's new independent, non-executive chairman to succeed Mr. Basil Omiyi. Also, Mr. Belo Rabiu was appointed as the new senior independent non-executive director to succeed Dr. Charles Okeahala. Indeed, since the 2014 IPO, Seplat Energy has made significant tax contributions of about $2.9 billion to Nigeria, a capex investment of over $2 billion and paid dividends of over $566 million. The company has also demonstrated exceptional adherence to corporate good governance, to the admiration of both local and international stakeholders and regulators. As we celebrate a decade of dual listing on the NGX and LSE, we are confidently marching into a future filled with greater opportunities, committed to leading Nigeria's energy transition with accessible, affordable and reliable energy that drives social and economic prosperity. Yes, thank you for that round of applause. and. We now bring up our CEO, Separate Energy PLC, Mr. Roger Brown. Thank you. And good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I will stand on existing protocols, but I do want to specially recognize the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources for taking time out of his incredibly busy schedule and honoring us with his presence here today. So I want to thank you. Mr. Heineken, I obviously want to recognise and thank the chairman of the, of the NGX, the group CEO, my good friend of the NGX, and also the acting CEO of the NGX. So thank you very much and thank you for taking time. We have some slides here which I promise I won't take too long over. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to run through quickly just uh, some of the salient points for SEPLAT. Uh, hopefully you can, you can see this, but, but on these slides, these slides will be available uh, for, for takeaway. But um, just a snapshot of, of SEPLAT today. We are seven onshore blocks in the Niger Delta and hopefully uh, looking to grow that with our new acquisitions. Um, we are... Well, we, not anymore, but we were at the time the only company to list jointly or duly on the NGX and the London Stock Exchange and actually then stepping up to the premium board uh, some years ago. In terms of staff, um, over 500 staff, it's actually, if you add in contract staff and everything else, the number's approaching to 1,000 staff uh, of the company. And about 98, 99% of those staff are Nigerian. In terms of the production, and there's some slides that will give this in more detail, uh, but we're about 60-40 in favor of liquids, i.e. oil and condensate and gas. Um, and in terms of reserves, it's roughly 50-50, slightly angled towards gas, but, but generally we are at 478 million barrels of oil equivalent. We're ha approaching half a billion barrels of reserves, and therefore, a lot of value for us to extract into the future. In terms of last year's performance, um, we're very proud that we went through symbolically the billion dollar turnover for us, which is a real celebration, and we're very proud of that. Um, if you look then in terms of ESG, and we'll go through that in some more detail, our commitments to ESG sustainability, and this is here to stay, and Seplat puts it at the forefront of what it's trying to do. Um, and then if you look at the far right there, we are a very big supplier of gas to this market and we're going to grow and become an even bigger domestic gas player. And we're going to be able to do that on the back of a very robust balance sheet of over $800 million of available credit. Um, there's only 
that's only possible with a strong commitment to the communities we operate. And again, I'll run through some of those slides on that. Okay, so very small here, but you, you can see a lot of our board members in the room here. We have um, a 14 member board, and that splits down to over half of those, that board are independents. Okay, so it's very important for us that seven out of the 14 are truly independent directors on the board, and that strikes a very strong governance. Three are executive, and four are what we call non-executive. So that's the 14. Um, it, obviously, we have uh, Adoma, Uda Adoma has just joined us on the board, as has Chris Okeke, who's in the front here, and Babs Omato, who's just joined us recently. And we're about to have another member join us um, next month, and that's going to be Eleanor at a rugby, and she's going to become our new CFO. And so therefore, very proudly, we, we're actually going to have our first female executive director of CEPLA. And I think it's very, very important. Thank you. When Eleanor joins us, then we'll have five female directors on the board. And that's approaching 40% in terms of percentages. So I think we're, we're leading on that. And again, it's our commitment to the importance of, of gender diversity and what we're trying to achieve. Again, this is a, it's quite hard to read this, but this is 10 years compressed into milestones. Um, we've talked a little bit around in, in, the, in, the, um, in the presentation, the, the, uh, the, the video, we talked about some of our acquisitions we've done, and we've been active. Okay, we've been, you know, beyond the uh, listing, which was 10 years ago. And in fact, 10 years ago, that started in this room, in this exchange, that is where Seplat started its listing life. And we're very proud of that in 2014. Um, we then have done a number of acquisitions. We put a lot of um, development into what we've achieved. Uh, for your benefit, uh, Minister, we've drilled over 100 wells. And that's how active we've been as a company. And, and we're going to be active even more than that. We have one gas plant functional today. We have a new gas plant coming this year in the east in the Anno gas plant, 300 million scuffs. We've got another one at Sapley Upgrade, and we want to do more and more gas. So please help us drive that forward. It's very important domestic. In terms of, um, I won't go through all those in, in any level of detail, but what is it to, in the headlines? We all love headlines. Uh, tax contribution to Nigeria, over $2 billion. In terms of royalties, PPT, PAYE. CapEx invested because you can't get this production and growth without money going in to the assets. So CapEx invested over 1.6 billion, okay? And what over 2 billion since our incorporation in, to, in 2010. Equity raised 535 million. In fact, if you actually take, and I would do this, if you knew me, you, you'd realize I'd do this. I take what we actually raised, which is 320 million pounds. And if I convert it at today's dollar per sterling rate, it's $400 million. So we really raised $400 million, and we're returning almost $600 million. So that's the quantity of returns to shareholders, <laughs> which I know is very important for, for the exchange and the shareholders. So anyway, I'll move on. OK, so we went back to, we went back 10 years ago, and we took our big, thick IPO document off the shelf and blew off the dust. And when we got beyond the, all the caveats, if you read these things, you'll know the first 10 pages, you should never buy anything, <laughs> right? Because there's so many caveats. Uh, but when we went through there, we then looked at the five objectives we set for ourselves 10 years ago, okay? And they're there. They're there. And then what we've said is what we've actually achieved. And I'm really pleased to say we've exceeded beyond what we expected by quite some margin. So we, taught, we said we set objectives in terms of maximizing production and reserves. We've beaten both those targets and reserve numbers, production. We set conservative acquisition and farming strategies. And we, again, we've added three, maybe four, almost four 
soon to be four, hopefully, um, major acquisitions. We then said we want to commercialize gas. And by the way, this is back in 2014 where gas wasn't the transition fuel. It wasn't things that people were focusing on. The gas price was a lot lower than it is today. And we want to say we want to commercialize that. And again, by the end of this year, we'll have three operating gas plants over 800 million scuffs a day. So that's quite a major, and most of that will go into power in Nigeria and actually reduce the cost of energy for every Nigerian in the population that can access it. So that's very important. The fourth one where it was a progressive dividend, and we've talked about it, we've continued to pay uh, big dividends back. The fifth one, which actually should be the first one, I think, which is good relations and integrate with the host communities. And this is one thing I think that SEPLAT's done really well, is set the, the rules of community engagement, actually invested in those communities, and had a fair freedom to operate. A fairness, if we're operating this land, the communities must benefit from this land, uh, from our, our work. And again, we've done that, and we've had a very successful GMOU and community engagement. So I think we can applaud for itself, so all right, can we? I think we... Okay, very quickly, because I know we're short of time. Just on the left, this is our oil um, assets in the map, and on the right in the gas. And I'll just say, look, we've got seven onshore blocks. You can see that across the delta. Um, they, our, our more focus is in the west, where we have four blocks, but we have some in the east and we have in the south, southeast. In terms of there, we've got the production numbers in the, in the oil and our, bar our 226 million barrels. So I'll, I'll let you study that at your leisure. On the right-hand side is the gas. And if you look at the gas map, there, you can see two circles there. And that really follows the gas master plan, where the gas master plan set out hubs gas hubs. There's a lot of gas in the delta, but we need to get it to these hubs. And we're lucky because we're in the two of the main hubs. Okay, so we, at, at the, the top one there is our open gas plant, and we're building a Sapley gas plant there. So we'll have a lot of processing there in the west. And then you can, the second one is the Anu hub, and the connections between those two hubs is the, is the pipeline. So the pipeline is so critical, the two BCF a day pipeline is so critical in the east to take that eastern gas into the west. But as soon as we can do that, it can monetize. I think also to say in the east, we're going to not just take all the gas west. We're actually going to put a lot of gas in the eastern development, which I think is going to be very critical for, for Nigeria. That gas, we would love that to be, we would love circles all over the map. So we want to do a lot more on gas itself. There's our gas reserves, gas production, and everything else, and it's something we focus on heavily. Some of the production numbers you can see there, uh, the reserves on the left. You can see the uplifts in acquisitions, so in terms of reserve numbers, but it's, it's pretty consistent. In fact, we've, we've actually replaced reserves this in 2023, uh, almost 300% reserve replacement ratio, which is a critical ratio to showing that we're adding reserves at the same time as extracting. Um, on the right-hand side, production history, you can see the ramp up. You can see certain years, 2016, where there was a shut-in of the pipelines. We had all those troubles. We still continue to produce our gas at that point. Um, and you can see there consistent historical production, which will uplift when the gas plants come on board uh, later this year. Contribution to Nigeria, this is only from 2010 to 2023. Those are the headlines. And this is working interest. This is what we ourselves have done. 5.4 billion of royalties. And this is all going back to the Federation. And the very important thing is, this is the power of the indigenous company, the independent, is returning that value back to government. And if we don't, well, you can come after me, Minister, right? <laughs> and my, my top team and everything else, Sam and everything else, because it, by law we have to, and that's what we are doing. That's going back into the Federation, and that's creating value for the future of Nigeria. 
withholding tax, PPT, etc. A couple of slides left. Community impact, our social commitment. Again, these should be at the front, not at the back. Um, what are we doing? And we want to do more of this. So healthcare, we have a very clear healthcare policy. It's important for us. We have a number of programs like I Can See program, Safe Motherhood program. You know, I think the numbers are now approaching over 100,000 eye tests and, and growing. And in fact, you can see the line there, which has just slowed up with COVID. Um, but then we're going to increase that. And we're going to put that. So to, when we get our, hopefully when we get Exxon deal done, we're going to do this in, in, in Aqua Ebom State as well. Access to energy, critical affordable energy for, for the wider population, educational programs aimed at school children and teachers. And, and the last one is in terms of community investment. And I think over the last 10 years, we've, we've gone almost $60 million of community investment. So it's giving back to the communities we um, work in. So last slide. So the problem is when you do well, the expectation levels go up, right? And the board says, I want more. Okay, so what's, what's in this year, right? Well, the journey continues. We've put five things. There are more than five. Acquisition of MPU. This is a very big game-changing acquisition for us. And I know we can do this justice. Okay, and I know we can ramp up production and grow and deliver it for Nigeria. Anogas is, is one of the seven critical gas projects. It's the first one to be complete. It will be this year. And that will then bring much needed value in the east and bringing that gas into the west. Uh, we have in Abiala and Siberia, which is in our El, um, Elcrest at OML 40. Abiala, we are actually bringing, which is a marginal field. So the marginal field we, we, we picked up and we're bringing it on production this year in Q3. And Siberia, which was an exploration um, on OML 40, we've, we've got discovery there. And again, we're going to bring that on for production this year. And the last one is obviously the Sapley gas plant I talked about. So the list is endless. The, the, the demands of the board is greater. The demands of Nigeria is greater, but Seplat is really ready to step up. So I want to thank everyone for listening today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roger, for that breakdown and for the, the headlines on Seplat's journey so far and for casting the vision for the future. Uh, it looks good. The company will continue to record success and contribute to the, to the economy. So one more time, can we celebrate Seplat Energy? <laughs> We're going to have a Q&A session. We want to make it interactive for a few minutes. But just before we do that, um, we have a couple of our friends who have joined us that we just want to quickly recognize. Um, we have the Managing Director, CEO, CSCS PLC, Mr. Haruna Jalo Waziri. I believe he stepped up briefly. Um, we also have the president of the Chartered Institute of Brokers, Mr. Oluwale Adeosun, here, here with us, as well as the chairman, Ashon, Mr. Sam Onukwe. You're very welcome, sir. Um, as Mr. Roger Brown said, we also have members of the Seplat Energy Leadership Team um, here with us. Can we just celebrate them as well? I don't think we did a proper recognition of them earlier. All right, so we want to take questions. Um, our CEO will direct who would answer. He might uh, answer some of the questions and might uh, pass the questions around as well. I will just grab a second mic and I will be in the audience. Oh, fantastic. We have that second mic. All right. So, okay, we have a first question. The chairman of Seplat uh, Energy, our distinguished Senator Madu Duma, and our dear Minister of Petroleum Resources, Senator Anakin Lukobri. You are indeed very much welcome. We welcome you, we broker, again to the home of capitalism and where we get things done. And we enrich all of you. We'll keep on doing that. Mine is just a comment. When the wine is good, the best you can do is just to take and to ask for more. I'm quite impressed with the statistics that uh, has been rolled out, partly 
in the video and the much more that the CEO has uh, deliberated and uh, brought out to the open the more and gave us more details. We are quite impressed about this. And a um, few things. The fact that the company is well diversified into crude production and also into gas and almost balancing it 50-50 the way. You show the company that is well diversified and we want to commend you on that strategy that you have in place to ensure continuous flow whereby uh, your revenues you can easily make up for one for the other where there is any kind of disruption. The second is the fact that you have been able to pay dividends that has equal and even exceeded the amount of the initial public offer. Not many companies are able to do this. We want to commend you on this and it is very remarkable and significant and we hope that even from now forward you'll be able to do far much more for investors that are going to, on account of this valuable information that we have brought out today, be able to invest in the company, you'll be able to, in some years from now, they'll be able to look back and say, yes, Seplat have done it once again. Um, you have been very good to the community, you've been good to the investor, you've been good to the government in terms of taxes, royalties that has been paid, very quite commendable. But we also want to request, you have leveraged on this market, but you have not been giving back to us. We, the stockbrokers in this market, when the institute writes you and requests for support, uh, we have not been getting feedback from you. We hope from now, the institute, the stockbrokers, that made things happen for you. When we write you, you'll be able to respond to us and put us as part of those that you responded to in the community. Thank you very much. We wish you, we wish you many more years of profitable drilling, prospecting for gas, and very valuable business. And that as we are listed here, with being the most expensive company on this market now, most valuable in terms of price per unit, that you keep on ensuring that you remain on top. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. I think that was a goodwill message slash question slash keynote address. We want to, want to thank you. Do you want to respond, sir? Do you want to respond to that? Or do we proceed to the... Okay, so we, we have time for just one more question, quickly. Do we have a hand? Okay, we have a hand at the back. Okay, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Um, my question is just um, straightforward. Okay, my name. My name is Ambrose Odaba. I represent Planet Capital. Okay, so um, I'm happy with the presentation, the achievements um, from what you said, going through the IPO document and dust it, and you're able to see what you set out to achieve. I've been able to achieve that. So my question is going forward, what are we expecting? Okay, so in the next 10 years, five years, when we return back here, what, are, what is going to be the landmark events or activities that we are going to you know, um, celebrate? Because looking forward, the performance generally has been encouraging, okay? And we want to see more performance, but that will only help us, our ability to be able to look into the future from today. We also help the communities to make further investment decisions on the company. Thank you. Um, are, are those the questions? Is there another? How I wish we be, want to be gender sensitive so that we have one lady to answer that question. <laughs> Let me tell you, the, the MC or somebody was making statements and they are the one coming up now. Let them prove it. <laughs> Okay, so, to, to respond. Okay. Okay. I'll commend ourselves. Thank you very much, Alaji, my director. <laughs> let, let me 
let me thank uh, the various people who uh, made comments and uh, we are encouraged uh, by the comments and assure you that we will keep on working harder. Uh, to deal with the specific issue of raised by the Chairman of Stockbrokers, uh, as well as the gentleman about the future, I think I'll, I will ask uh, the CEO to give more details. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think, I think the first question was, we said it was, a, it was a statement, but it was actually a statement and a request at the same time. <laughs> so, so I just say thank you very much for your, your, your statement, your very kind words. And in terms of your request, I promise I will look out for that letter and we will certainly look into it for sure. Yeah, so it's a very good point. Uh, the second question really is, you know, I, I, I didn't bring the crystal ball with me, but, uh, you know, I think it's, what's the next five to ten years? Um, well, look, we, you know, we, we will not set that out yet, okay? But let's just say, I think Nigeria is going through an enormous change uh, with this, the direction of the current government is setting it, which is to be the destination, the investment destination in the next 5, 10, 20, 50 years. And Nigeria can achieve it, okay? But it's not going to achieve it unless we balance between government and the private sector, okay? And I think SEPLAD is certainly from a private sector perspective, wants to be the leader, it wants to be driving trailblazing the growth. In our sector, we're seeing a massive change, a huge change that I personally am extremely excited about, okay? Because I know we can work together to deliver that opportunity. As the international oil companies move to the deep water, which is really where their expertise, their around the world, their, their massive resource can do it. And um, what it does do is allow the, the onshore and the shallow water offshore to be dominated by the independent companies alongside government. And I know from IPPG, which is the Independent Producers Group, um, I know as a group we can deliver this. So what, what is SEPLAC going to do around this thing, right? Well, first of all, you know, what we want to do is obviously complete this acquisition, the ExxonMobil acquisition, which will bring four shallow water off block, offshore blocks with us and a massive gas potential and oil potential for growth. Um, so that's going to be part of our five to ten year, hopefully next year plan. Um, then when I look at across the, the, the rest of it, we have a, I didn't talk about it too much today, but we have a three-pronged approach to growth here. So we have the first prong, which is the upstream oil and gas, we talked a lot about. The second one, which we call our pillar two business, which is, which is the gas processing. And alongside those gas plants doing LPG, CNG we want to do, LNG, which is, you know, Exxon Transaction will, will help with that. So exporting gas and actually using internally. And then our third prong is, is electricity. And so at the minute what we do is we stop at the line between converting that gas molecule into electricity we as a board have made a decision we're going to go into electricity and then that will lead us into renewable energy. So five to ten years from now, what I think we're going to be, well, we're certainly going to be, I'm looking at the minister at the minute, but we're certainly going to be 11 blocks, we think. Um, I think there'll be more blocks than that, right? I think there'll maybe be more, and even maybe deep water for us. I think there's a good opportunity for that. Um, I know we'll have more gas plants. I know that we'll be doing a lot more in the CNG and LPG and, and LNG. And then I want to see us having power plants and actually be very clear what the renewable for Nigeria is going to be. We need electricity first. We need a grid system first. And then when we do that, we can do a lot more solar and other renewable energy. So I want all those three pillars done for the next five to 10 years. I want us to be much, much bigger. And I want the IPPG to really be dominant, and I know they will be, and a very true partner for government in terms of the growth for Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much.
And, and I think that's the perfect segue to just get a quick remark and response from uh, Honorable Minister uh, before we have a closing remark. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Senator Dr. Heineke Lopobiri, to give a short remark. Thank you. Um, the Chairman of the Exchange, um, the Chairman of Seplat, Senator Dodoma, uh, let me say, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a real privilege to be here today. Today is my first visit to the Stock Exchange in my life. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> it's something I've always looked forward to, and I'm happy that Seplat eventually dragged me here today. And I'm here on a very special occasion of surplus 10 years of, you know, listing in the stock exchange here and that of the London Stock Exchange. And I'm happy to be part of today's celebration of, you know, surplus exceptional performance in the last 10 years. And as Minister in Charge of Oil, Minister of Petroleum Resources, I, on behalf of federal government, you know, say categorically here, that we will partner with Seplat, you know, to expand their investment for the benefit. <laughs> we'll partner with, with us with Seplat to expand their investment, not only for the benefit of Seplat shareholders, but also, you know, for Nigeria as a country. If you see the numbers of Seplat's contribution in terms of royalties, taxes, it's enormous. And um, nobody can overemphasize that. And the least government can do anywhere in the world is to create the best environment for companies like Seplat to continue to thrive. So, Seplat, all the issues you raise about, you know, the exit mobile transaction, you know, have brought you and NNPC together, and we are the venture of closing all those issues. And I can assure you, I can assure you that um, we will close that in a very short time. The president is committed to the closure of that. I mean, president, you know, um, directed that I accompany him to New York sometime last year, and we had a meeting with ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil, you know, uh, said, look, talk with Seplat, and then we'll be talking to Seplat to brought parties together. We've gone pretty far, and I believe that we will close it no matter, you know, uh, the obstacles, so we'll close it. And because that is fundamental to the opening of new investment in this country. Now that the whole world is campaigning against, you know, investment in fossil fuel, if we close this separate transaction, separate expands the investment, Bonga Nut, which is predicated on that resolution, comes on board. The whole world will know that Nigeria now has become a new investment destination. And that is what, you know, the objective of, you know, um, this government is. And I also want to take this opportunity to call on other companies to emulate Seplat. It might be increasingly difficult to access funding from the West. The Middle East, Saudi Arabia, UAE, they may not need money from any other country to expand their investment in oil and gas. Because they have the money. But here, for some reason, we don't have the money. So we have to involve some ingenious ways of raising money. And I think the capital market should be the answer. <laughs> I want Nigerians to know that fossil fuel is not going away. The whole essence of the PIA was to ensure that we explore our oil and gas resources in a more responsible, cleaner, and sustainable way. You can also bear me witness that no country is stopping the production of fossil fuel. Not America. America is the highest producer of fossil fuel. They are not slowing down at all. You go to Norway, you can recall that last year um, the British government gave up over 100 licenses for new explorations in the North Sea. All those things will require capex. But we need it here more. And I believe that I've always told, you know, the climate envoys that we are not against transition. Well, if the entire African continent 
emits only 3% of global emissions, then allow us to transit <laughs> at our own pace. We are victims. Why, are you, why is your campaign more sustained, you know, at the doorstops of the victims? You people who are causing it, you are bringing your campaign by promising all sorts of things that are not feasible. And I've told people that no matter the promises of somebody saying that, okay, if you stop fossil fuel, they will give you such amount. Just promises. And so at the level of OPEC, at the level of, you know, um, African Petroleum Producers Organization, APO, we are firmly committed to sustaining our production in oil and gas, although in a more responsible and cleaner way by deploying the best of technologies. But it's also an opportunity for us to increase our production so that we can begin to build capital now that the market price is very attractive. And so I'm using the opportunity to, you know, call on other companies, other oil companies, you know, uh, who are members of IPBG, who I believe, you know, will be the answer to our energy security problems of the country. Okay, look, you need to solve your own problems by yourself. The time has come for us to evolve homegrown solutions to our own problems. And I believe that the separate example, you know, should be recommended for all other companies to begin to develop very strong corporate governance structures that will attract financiers to have confidence and then invest in them. If we have 10 companies like Zeplat, you can imagine that contribution, how that contribution will be to our economy. And our dream as Minister of Petroleum is to create the best environment, both the fiscal and the regulatory framework as prescribed by the PIA, you know, to create the best environment for companies like Zeplat to continue to thrive. And I want to also assure Seplat that as you celebrate 10 years, our expectation in the next 10 years is that Seplat, you know, that has grown, you know, its share price by over 500%, you will grow in every ramification by more than 500% in the next 10 years. So on behalf of, um, you know, the Minister of Petroleum, Federal Government of Nigeria, I congratulate I mean, Seplat you know, for this wonderful, exceptional, you know, performance. And my prayer is that you will sustain this momentum. You will sustain this momentum so that it will be taken as a shining example, not just in Nigeria. So many African countries are coming to Nigeria to learn from us how things have been done here. And I believe that Saplat will be a good example, not only to other companies in Nigeria, not only in the upstream, but also in the midstream and then, you know, the downstream. And sometimes when, you know, um, uh, some companies come to the Minister of Petroleum, we may refer them to you for tutorials <laughs> so, that, uh, <laughs> so that you can tell them how Subplat, you know, uh, uh, came, um, you know, uh, this far. You know, as, 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 as a ministry, we, we are also evolving ideas on how we can ramp up production. And one of, you know, what we have decided to do is to say, look, every available well should be explored. There are thousands of idle wells, thousands. Sublet, you know what I'm talking about. You go to some locations, some blocks may have 150 you know, oil wells. And then you have maybe five, six out of the 150 are the only ones that are active. The rest are just lying idle. Why can't we give some of those wells to, you know, those contiguous producers so they can ramp up production? These are ideas that we're talking to them because the PIA gives us, you know, authority to be able to farm out those wells that have not been explored for the last seven years. So we're engaging, you know, stakeholders, the IOCs, we're engaging NMPC to say, look, the ones you can't use, there's no point in keeping them. And so Saplat will have good opportunity to grab a lot more. And since you've already, you know, shown your capacity, <coughs> when that time comes, please take advantage of it. So you can take a lot more assets, run them for the benefit 
of your company and Nigeria. Thank you. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for that wonderful remark and for highlighting the Seplat Energy example. Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very fine afternoon and uh, we are coming to the conclusion of this part of the occasion. We still have the closing gong ceremony to happen. And um, just before we do that, we need to again recognize the most senior doyen. He's now here with us present. Please, ladies and gentlemen, warmly, Alhaji Rashid Yusuf. And I'm now going to quickly welcome our very honorable Mr. William Ndata. Uh, on the floor, he has a very wonderful name, I've been told. Um, he's called the Militant Doyen on the floor. Uh, please welcome William Ndata to give us uh, closing remarks. Thank you very much. Um, I want to uh, welcome the chairman of CEPLAT and uh, the CEO of CEPLAT. And I have to come home to welcome or to greet our group chairman of NGS, the group CEO of NGS, and uh, our own Jude Chemeka, the acting CEO of uh, NGS. And uh, for me not to uh, go far of uh, my institute, I want to uh, welcome my president, Chartered Institute of Subrokers, and the Ashan chairman. And I want to say my cap is done for my senior doing. Uh, I want to welcome um, Seplat and congratulate him for this feat. At least for today, you have proof you are critics wrong in so many areas. Because when you came to the market, they say, no track record. Why is uh, stockbrokers marketing you up and down? Why did they accept, accept you? Uh, it is the, the eye of a little child that fears the painted death. We know this is our business. And this is what we know how to do best. And uh, we always know that if you see a foul scattering sheet outside, you have to drive that foul away because you don't know when they kill that foul that it's you that will chop the leg. <laughs> and uh, the chairman today is here, the Udoma. They say he that knows the road will show, uh, will lead the way very well. And uh, Seplat has done so many things right, I must confess. Ten years ago, when they came, came to the floor, if they played the video, they know that I was around. At least I'm the <laughs> floor doing and the militant doing. I know all that is happening. And uh, there's no how rain will fall without the ground knowing. <laughs> and Seplat have known that uh, they cannot do this thing alone because you cannot clap with one hand. The two hands must be together before the clap will sound. And today I am very, very happy because uh, you have proved our critic wrong because they were saying, no track record. Why are you marketing yeah. uh, separate more than themselves? It's like those that say, come and eat. And you that they say, come and eat, you are washing two hands. The owner of the food, what will he do? Will he bath? <laughs> and uh, if <laughs> you cannot be drinking bottled water. He asked me to go and drink 
the sea or the well water. It's not done. You cannot beat the child badly and say she should not cry badly. So the, all that is happening there, they know the terrain where they are operating and they have sorted it out. I know they will go places. By the next time they will come here, I know they will tell us the more dividend they will increase to the shareholders yeah. and more things that will uh, do to the stockbroking profession. And um, I cannot just close my eye that uh, my president made the complaint and uh, I wave it with a wave of hand. Next time, step lot. If you see a letter from our president to say support us, you have to support us. Noted. Because he that is dancing doesn't see his or her back. It is those that are watching that will say you are dancing well. Today we are saying that you are dancing well. And when we go to the floor, I know I will ask my senior doing to give me permission to ask our members to sing the family song for you. Because he that has done well will be treated well. I think for now, here I can end my catechism. We will meet on the floor. Thank you so much um, to our floor day and Mr. William Data for that wonderful closing remark. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the conclusion of this part of the occasion. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we want to take photographs of the members of the high table quickly. So we're going to just uh, ask that they please rise for quick photographs.